Okay, let's go ahead and test these levels really quick. Just want to make sure that the audio is good and that we'll have necessary audio levels for both myself on the headset and on the crowd mic. So let's see what we can do here. Once again, this is a test of the audio. And it sounds like we're all good to go. So we'll come back to you at about the 15 minute mark. We'll get started with the pre-show then. And then we'll be on our way. Homecoming basketball, Scott Galvin Community Center, North Miami, sunny South Florida.
A pleasant good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Scott Galvin Community Center in North Miami, sunny South Florida. This is University of Fort Lauderdale men's basketball on the UFTL Sports Network. And hi, everybody. I am David Griffith, the voice of the Eagles, here to bring you another exciting season of UFTL basketball and UFTL athletics. And starting off tonight, it couldn't be any type of better opening for Fort Lauderdale. It is homecoming night. There will be a homecoming king and queen crowned at the halftime show. But more importantly, there is a game to be played tonight. The University of Fort Lauderdale Eagles in their second official year as a franchise in basketball. Last year they went 13 and 15 and made it all the way to the postseason. They won their first postseason game in overtime before dropping their second postseason game to the number one ranked team and falling short. But coach Anthony Anderson says he has high hopes for his team returning eight players from last season and giving way to a bunch of brand new playmakers from near and far. And it's a fighting family, you might as well say, as his son, Antoine Anderson, is the head coach of Atlantis University on the other side, bringing in an Atlantis team that last year went 18 and two during the regular season, including a perfect 11 and zero on the road. But the one time that the two teams did play each other on Atlantis's Home venue, Fort Lauderdale won that game in January of 2022, 93-75. So Fort Lauderdale, they look to get off to a good start and see if the high hopes from Coach Anthony Anderson are warranted or if Atlantis can play the stopper and continue their dominance on the road just like last season. It's going to be a battle, a very special night here in late October in South Florida. Homecoming night for Fort Lauderdale. We'll take a break. And when we come back in a few minutes, we will have the national anthem as well as the starting lineups for both teams. And welcome back to the Scott Galvin Community Center in North Miami. David Griffith, voice of the Eagles, back again. We are just a few minutes away from the pregame ceremonies 
the starting lineups and the national anthem on homecoming night, the first game of the season for Fort Lauderdale. And these are two teams that really, they couldn't really be much more similar. Fort Lauderdale likes to go fast break on the floor, while Atlantis in the meantime, they want to be able to stop the fast break, and they're able to do that by quickly getting back in a transition. And Coach Anderson stressed the emphasis of getting open shots as well as trying to beat that transition defense of Atlantis. He also said that despite him going up against his son, that doesn't automatically mean that he's an expert at what he has in mind. When you have a son that's in coaching, that could certainly get to you. Fort Lauderdale after tonight will be on the road for a lengthy road trip, including going to LSU, Alexandria, and Louisiana. They'll have a few games on the road and then come back home to Florida for a few road games within the state of Florida, particularly South Florida. But it all starts here tonight with game one, Fort Lauderdale and Atlantis. The clock on the scoreboard indicated six minutes and seven seconds, but it's currently frozen. I guess you could say that means we're frozen in time. I guess you'll be stuck with me for the unforeseeable future because we certainly want you to be a part of that here on the UFTL Sports Network. A good thing for the air conditioning in here. It when I say air conditioning, I mean that you can hang meat inside here. It is on the cool side. Thankfully, there are people who have chosen to wear long sleeve shirts, and they chose wisely. Outside it may be warm, but inside it is the complete opposite. Both teams are still completing their shoot around before we get started with the game. So stick around. We'll be back in just a few minutes for the pregame festivities.
And after the introductions of the homecoming nominees, the winners will be announced at halftime. Looks like it's time for the other pregame festivities, including the national anthem. So we will remain quiet as we play the Star Spangled Banner at the Scott Galvin Community Center as both teams take the floor, their respective sides. The cheerleaders assume their posts. our national anthem. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, the starting lineups. First for the visiting Atlanteans, and then for the hometown Fort Lauderdale Eagles. Once again, we thank you for coming to the Giants today. Tonight's matchup between the Atlanteans of Atlantis University and your University of Fort Lauderdale Eagles. Let's meet the visiting. Please put your hands together for number one.
Peyton Hopkins. Number 12, Thais Wood. And number 15, Kim Lewis. The Atlantic is a coach by Hunter. This is by Serrano and Nick Trevor. And there you have the starting lineups for both teams. For Atlantis University, it is number one, Jordan Burrow. Number four, Jana Shepard. Number 11, Kevin Hopkins Jr. Number 12, Tyus Williams. And number 15, Ken Lewis. For Fort Lauderdale, number one, Benez Woodard. Number three, Andre Anderson. Number 10, Brandon Smith. Number 22, John Cor Unweech. And number 12, Trayvon White. John Cora getting ready to jump it up against Ken Lewis, six foot eight versus six foot eight. John Cora, the six foot eight center for Fort Lauderdale from Juba, South Sudan, and Ken Lewis, the freshman forward from Miami, Christopher Columbus High School. The cheerleaders getting loud on the near side of the court. Fort Lauderdale will start off going from right to left. Atlanta starting off from left to right. The ball is in the air, the ball is tipped by White, and here goes Fort Lauderdale. Trayvon White on the layup, it rattles around and out, out of bounds, last touch by UFTL, and it belongs to Atlantis. Seven seconds into the game. Fast break for Fort Lauderdale, right off the get-go, but not successful. Trayvon White just couldn't put it in. Jordan Burrow with the ball for Atlantis, he's in the front zone, blanket coverage by Andre Anderson. Feeds it to Janice Shepard, goes inside, whistle, and a foul on Fort Lauderdale as Shepard went into the lane. The foul is on number one, Benez Woodard, and he has a very early foul, just 19 seconds into the contest. Jordan Burrow to inbound. The shot clock stays where it is at 22. And hold on, we have a whistle, and it is a foul. Is it a foul or is it a reset of the shot clock? It's a reset, reset of the shot clock, I think. It should be at 20 seconds rather than 22. There it is, there's the correct shot clock. It wasn't a foul, I beg your pardon. There was a stoppage in play to reset the clock to where it was supposed to be. 20 seconds. Lobs it in to Jenna Shepard. Thought about the three from Trader Way. Did Williams, goes inside. Back to Ken Lewis, little fall away five footer. Tear drop, got it. And that's the first points of the game. 2-0 in favor of Atlantis, 35 seconds in. 
Trayvon White left wing, John Cora straight away. Andre Anderson outside of the York, 101 against Jordan Burrow. Goes inside, right in lane, off the glass, and it goes in and one. And Anderson gets himself to the line with a chance for a three-point play possibility. And Anderson knocks it up at two. 44 seconds into the contest. A one shot on the free throw because Anderson made the layup. The layup by Anderson rattles around a bit too strong and it comes right back down to Atlanta. 50 seconds into this game, it's 2-2, two apiece. Atlantis University with her second trip down. Ball controlled by Tyus Williams. Ken Lewis at the free throw line. Bad pass. Tipped around and stolen by Trandon Smith. Does a little 360. Smith. No look pass to Trayvon White. He's whistle. Offensive foul against White. Trayvon White gets whistled for the offensive foul. And it's a shame too because he did everything right. But he was a little too aggressive on that play. It stays 2-2. Two two, and Atlantis once again gets the ball. Substitution for Fort Lauderdale, Trayvon White is out and in is number 21, Mark Lancaster, one of the newbies on the team. One newbie replaces another. So Anthony Anderson digging into his bench early in this contest. As Atlantis controls the ball with Jordan Burrow, left of the free throw line to Tyus Williams, inside off the glass for the right side and gets it to go. 4-2 to two in favor of Atlantis. A minute and 25 into the game as Tyus Williams gets his first points of the game. Also in for Fort Lauderdale is number two, Kamari Brown. As Benez Woodard finds Andre Anderson at the right wing. Directing traffic, a whistle, and we have a whistle for something. Stoppage in play because the shot clock wasn't operational. They reset it to 18. Kamari Brown, who was the leading scorer on Fort Lauderdale last year, despite not joining the team until basically halfway through the season, will do the honors of inbounding right in front of the Atlantis bench on the near side. Fort Lauderdale moving from right to left here in this first half, wearing their here in this first half, wearing their gray uniforms with the flame for the trim. Lancaster back to Kamari Brown. Shot clock not a factor. They have plenty of time. Benez Woodard right of the lane. Inside right of the lane to Kamari Brown. Back over to John Cora. Puts it up and in. Right in front of the basket. Ties the game up at 4-4. A minute 55 into the game. Atlantis meanwhile trapped into their own corner. But they get free as Jordan Burrow comes back the other way for Atlantis. Wide open. Left of the lane. Left wing, three-pointer is good for Kevin Hopkins. He gets the three, and Atlantis goes back up 7-4 to four with 2 minutes and 15 seconds gone by in the first half. Mark Lancaster looks for somebody, finds Kamari Brown at the right elbow. Vanessa Woodard fakes the three, back to Kamari Brown, goes inside to the foul line. Andre Anderson, left wing. Inside, little off-balance shot, no. It bounces off the front of the rim and taken away by Atlantis. Length of the court pass over to Tyus Williams. He missed the shot. Rebound by Ken Lewis. The second chance bucket. That's no good. A rebound by John Cora. Strong rebound by John Cora with both hands. And Fort Lauderdale back on the offensive. Head coach Anthony Anderson of the Eagles. Off his seat. He sets the play. Benez Woodard wearing the number one. Last year he was number five. Kamari Brown had it stripped away but taken back by John Cora. Benez Woodard right wing. Pull up 15 footer, no. Rebound by Mark Lancaster right underneath the basket. Lobs it to John Cora at the left elbow. Whistle, and we have. The shot clock was at one. It should have reset to 20 because the shot had hit the rim. So they'll start again, and the shot clock will reset to 17 seconds. 3.50 re gone by in this, or three minutes and 10 seconds, I beg your pardon. 16.50 remaining in this first half. A seven to four advantage for Atlantis. And Fort Lauderdale from the near side will inbound. It is Kamari Brown. Feeds it to Andre Anderson straight away outside the arc. Thought about the three, but this is it back to Kamari Brown instead. Bounce pass to John Cora, right wing. Feeds it again to Kamari Brown, right at the 
Foul line, Andre Anderson, left elbow, shot clock at three. Anderson slaloms inside, off balance shot, doesn't get it to go, but he does get himself to the line for two free throws from the left side of the basket as he got fouled by Ken Lewis, number 15. That's Lewis's first. And Anderson with his second and third free throw attempts of the game. He missed his and one opportunity when the game was tied at two. So let's see if Anderson can atone from his earlier miss. His first free throw is up, and that one's strong, and that is no good. Substitution for Fort Lauderdale. Aubrey Washington checks in for Benez Woodard. Washington is a graduate student. He comes to Fort Lauderdale after playing for Florida Memorial. And Anderson with one more shot upcoming. This is to make it a two-point game early in the first half. Second free throw rattles in. Three points for Anderson, his first by way of the free throw. Atlantis back on the attack. They go a fast tempo with a 7-5 lead. Three and a half in the game. Ken Lewis whistle, foul, no. No basket traveling on Lewis as he bumped into Kamari Brown. And the Eagles get the ball back. Another substitution for Fort Lauderdale. Marquez Smith into the game, replacing Andre Anderson. And also another newbie for Fort Lauderdale, number 13, Christian Dijon, in for Joncor as Fort Lauderdale goes small. On the opposite side of the court, Kamari Brown inbounds it to Marquez Smith and a whistle because they're still having problems with the shot clock. 16-21 showing on the clock in the first half. Kamari Brown has to inbound again, this time from the scorer's table on the opposite side of where I'm positioned. Gets it to Marquez Smith, and we have another stoppage in play. They're still having problems with that shot clock. They reset the shot clock to, it shows 24 currently, but is that what it's supposed to be? It looks like it is. 24 seconds on the shot clock. Bounce pass on the inbound play to Marquez Smith. Fort Lauderdale on the offensive. Aubrey Washington to Kamari Brown, right wing. Blanket coverage from Atlantis. Shot clock not a factor. Brown almost lost it. Gets it back to Mark Lancaster. Drives inside, left of the paint. Goes inside, whistle, foul. Doesn't get the shot to go, but Lancaster goes to the line for a couple more free throws. His first free throw opportunities of this game. The foul is on number four, Janice Shepard. That is his first foul. And the third team foul on Atlantis overall. Lancaster with a chance to tie this game. Four minutes gone by in this opening half with Fort Lauderdale down seven to five. Lancaster's first shot is up and it rattles out. So far for Fort Lauderdale, not a lot of success with the free throws, only one for four. And that's why they're behind by two. And you also see the importance of why you need to hit the free throws. Second free throw from Lancaster. He's got it with nothing but net. First point for Lancaster. It's 7-6 to six in favor of Atlantis. Four minutes into the game and they have the ball. And we have a whistle and a foul on number zero, Marquez Smith. As Deshaun Archilis, who was fresh into the game, Ran into Smith, but he gets called for the foul. The third team foul on Fort Lauderdale. Both teams have three. So the inbound coming from Atlantis on the near side on Fort Lauderdale's defensive side. It is number one, Jordan Burrow, to do the inbounding. Bounces it into Deshaun Archilas. 101 against Mark Lancaster over by the hash mark. Jordan Burrow holds it up on the other side of the court by the hash mark. 101 against Marquez Smith. Dribbles it with the left hand. Caught over by the Fort Lauderdale bench. Shot clock is at 10. Burrow traveling on Burrow. He shuffled shuffle his foot once too many. And that's a turnover. Fort Lauderdale gets it back. And the crowd on hand for tonight's homecoming game. A sizable crowd. A sizable yet partisan crowd for the Eagles. Voice their approval of that one. Marquez Smith bounces it to Aubrey Washington. Straight away outside the arc whistle. And we have 
a foul away from the ball. It is on number three, Deshaun Archilis, and that is the fourth team foul on Atlantis, and Archilis is first. Archilis checks out, replaced by number 24, Jarvis Hunt. Originally on the roster as a red shirt, but he's on the active roster tonight. And Marquez Smith will inbound from underneath the Atlantis basket as the shot clock resets to 20. 15-25 showing on the clock here in the first half. Atlantis with a precarious one-point lead, 7-6. And ready to restart. Inbound to the Lancaster right at the top of the key. Aubrey Washington finds Christian Dijon at the left wing. Marquez Smith penetrates inside. Washington three, left wing, off to the right. Rebound by Kamari Brown, goes up. No basket, offensive foul on Brown. He got the basket to go, but before he did, he got the arm out, and he just shoved Janice Shepard out of the way. Kamari Brown picks up his first personal, and that is the fourth team foul on Fort Lauderdale. And they still trail by one. Atlantis on the offensive. 15-10 remaining in the first half. Jordan Burrow with the ball. 1-1 against Marquez Smith. Gets it to Kevin Hopkins Jr. 1-1 against Christian Dijon. Back out to Jordan Burrow. He has to jump over. Jump off the floor to get it. Hopkins inside. Pull up 20-footer off the front of the rim. Rebound right to Dijon. Marquez Smith on the fast break. One against three. Smith bad shot. It clinks off the board. It is kept alive by Jordan Burrow. Here comes Atlantis yet again. Burrow over to Hopkins. Over in the near corner, Jenna Shepard outside the arc and gets it back to Hopkins. They reset. Crowd getting loud for Fort Lauderdale. Hopkins on the inside, 1-1 against Washington. Screen set by number 21, Terrence Williams, the big and tall center. Shepard gets caught out of bounds. Last touch by Fort Lauderdale as the crowd makes their presence known here tonight. It is a timeout on the floor with 14-21 remaining in the first half. Not a lot of scoring going on. There's been missed shots and there's been great defense all the way around. Seven to six in favor of Atlantis. We'll take a quick timeout and come back in just a moment. This is Eagles basketball on the UFTL Sports Network. After the Atlantis timeout, they'll have the inbound on Fort Lauderdale's defensive side, what was six on the shot clock because Fort Lauderdale did not establish full control of the ball. Atlantis control of the ball. Atlantis with a precarious one point lead, seven to six. And doing the inbounding is number 24, Jarvis Hunt. Right in his face is number 21 for Fort Lauderdale, Mark Lancaster. Hunt holds the ball over his head, gets it inside on the bounce pass to Terrence Williams. Finds Hunt at the right wing, goes inside against two defenders, whistle, it is a shot clock violation on Atlantis before he gets the shot off. So Fort Lauderdale with six seconds of solid defense. Another substitution for Atlantis, it is number 12, Tyus Williams into the game for Jarvis Hunt. So Antoine Anderson with the quick hook, and Fort Lauderdale back on the offensive, 
14-12 showing on the clock in the first half. They're down by one. They can take the lead this trip down. Dijon with the ball, finds Aubrey Washington on the far side of the right wing, right in front of the Atlantis bench. Lancaster stuck over in the corner, still has the ball, still stuck in the corner, ball is tipped, but finds its way somehow to Benez Water, but the ball is stolen by the other number one, Jordan Burrow, inside, layup is out! It rattled around the rim and came back down to number 10, Brandon Smith of Fort Lauderdale. Once again, they can take the lead with any type of shot. Inside goes Aubrey Washington, fakes the shot, pull up five footer, got it on the high archer. First field goal for Aubrey Washington, gives Fort Lauderdale the lead with 13 and a half minutes remaining in the first half. It's an 8-7 lead. Defensive chant going on from the Fort Lauderdale crowd here tonight. Ball belongs to Kevin Hopkins. Pull up 15 footer, it rattles out again, and another rebound by Trandon Smith. Atlantis is getting the looks, but they're just not falling. Christian Dijon has the ball. He sets a play, finds Aubrey Washington at the right wing. No look, three, it's out. A little bit short on that one. Washington confident on the shot, but not that time. Jordan Burrow up court for Atlantis. It's still an 8-7 lead for Fort Lauderdale. 12-53 remaining in the first half. Gets a screen from Terrence Williams. Back over to Williams, 20-footer from the left side. No, for the top of the key, rebound by Burrow. Goes back up with it, off the glass and in. Jordan Burrow with his first field goal of the game. His first two points, Atlantis leads 9-8, 12-36 remaining in the first half. Lancaster, left wing, goes inside, double covered, blocked by Williams, but kept alive by Benez Woodard. He stuck over in the corner, double team, Wash Lancaster three from the far side, got it from the right wing. Mark Lancaster. He's got four points, and the score is 11-9 in favor of Fort Lauderdale, 12-11 remaining in the first half. Burrow, wild shot, a layup at Falls to the floor, but he gets his own rebound. Ball still loose on the floor. A whistle and a jump ball signal goes up. According to the possession arrow, well, let's see where it stays. It looks like it will stay with Atlantis. As Mark Lancaster subs out, Trayvon White back into the game, as is Andre Anderson. And also Trandon Smith coming out too. But what a job they did in reserve. Anthony Anderson trying to get as many people involved in this first half as he possibly can. The free, th the uh, jump ball sign for the referee went up, so it stays with Atlantis according to the possession arrow. They have 14 seconds to shoot. 12.04 on the clock, Atlantis trails by a two. There's a three from the left wing. It is a bad shot. It didn't draw any iron at all. Second chance bucket, no. Rebound again by Atlantis. Jordan Burrow has it straight away. Three from Tavares Johnson, so wish. A three for Javaris Johnson, and they have a one-point lead again, 12 to 11, with 11.43 remaining in the first half. Aubrey Washington still in the game for Fort Lauderdale, goes inside, left side to Christian Dijon, finds Andre Anderson. Fort Lauderdale back outside the yard, cross-court pass to Dijon, inside, bounce pass to Trayvon White, bad pass, nobody home, and miscommunication to Benez Woodard, it bounces out of bounds, it goes back to Atlanta. Woodard out of position as Fort Lauderdale tried a set play, but miscommunication that time. Atlantis with the ball back with a one-point lead, 12 to 11. Both teams playing solid defense in the first 10 minutes of this game. Jordan Burrow inside, loose ball, recovered by Ken Lewis, whistle, foul, and it is a two-shot foul for Ken Lewis. It is on number 12, Trayvon White, his second. And that is the, according to the board, looks like the fourth team foul for Fort Lauderdale. Both teams have four team fouls. And at the line is Ken Lewis. His first shot is in there. That is his third point, his first by way of a free throw as Jarvis Hunt checks back in for Atlantis as does number 23, Benjamin Saito, his first playing time tonight. Lewis with a second free throw upcoming. And he misses that short off the front of the rim and a one-handed rebound by Trayvon White, the left hand. 
And Fort Lauderdale back on the offensive. Once again, trailing by two, 13 to 11, with 11 minutes exactly remaining in the first half. White falls to the ground, but gets back up as Trandon Smith is at the right elbow. Goes inside against two defenders, can't get it to go, and another rebound by Atlantis. It is number 24, Jarvis Hunt. There's a three from the right side. It is too strong from Jar Javaris Johnson. Loose ball recovered by Atlantis. Goes inside, whistle, foul, and Mike Evans gets himself to the line with a two-shot foul. And that was a tough, tough attempt at a shot. The foul is on Benez Woodard. That is board for Fort Lauderdale tonight. Their next team foul will result in a one-and-one -one situation, regardless if it's a shooting foul or not. And then if they get to 10, regardless if it's a shooting foul or not, it's two free throws the rest of the half. As Mike Evans knocks down his first free throw and his first point of the game. 14 to 11 in favor of Atlantis. Shankor back into the game for Fort Lauderdale. As Benez Woodard gets a breather. One more free throw upcoming for Mike Evans. And he's got them both. 15 to 11 in favor of Atlantis University. They have a four point lead. Their biggest margin of lead in this game so far. Andre Anderson, hand off to Aubrey Washington. Ball gets away from him, but a whistle for a foul on, looks like number 23, Benjamin Saito. That is his first. And the fifth team foul on Atlantis. Deshaun Archelis back into the game as Javaris Johnson sits down. Ten and a half exactly remaining in the first half. Fort Lauderdale down by four, 15 to 11. Trayvon White bounce pass to John Corr, loses the ball, is out of bounds, and it belongs to Atlantis as John Corr couldn't fully control it, and it bounces away from him outside the playing surface. So Atlantis once again on the offensive. Archilis didn't bounce it to Jarvis Hunt despite full court press going off for Fort Lauderdale. Gets it across the midcourt stripe. Fort Lauderdale down by four. They need to stop defensively in order to try to get back into this game. Hunt goes around, no, tip in is in from Ken Lewis. Five points for Lewis, 17 to 11 in favor of Atlantis. Almost a bad pass, Aubrey Washington gets it back. Shankor holds it up, cross court pass to Andre Anderson, three left wing, it's wide right air ball. Shankor keeps it alive, inbounds, that's a loose ball, it is out of bounds. It is last touched by Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale very sloppy on the offensive board. And you can credit the great Atlantis defense in the first half for that. There's a timeout on the floor with 9.53 remaining in the First half, Atlanta 17, Fort Lauderdale 11. As Anthony Anderson wants to talk it over, he doesn't want this first half getting away from them this quickly. Nine minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the first half. Atlantis leads 17 to 11, and after the timeout, Atlantis gets another inbound on their defensive side, so they have to go the full 94 feet. But their offense, while their offense has been inconsistent, their defense has been playing lights out so far. 
Fort Lauderdale with only 11 points. And Fort Lauderdale's not been able to generate any type of momentum on the offensive floor. Tyus Williams gets it in to Kevin Hopkins Jr. Jordan Burrow has the ball as he is one-on-one -on -one against Andre Anderson over by the UFTL bench. Burrow one-on-one -on -one against Anderson. Shift going on for Atlanta. Shot clock not a factor. Burrow backs up to the hash mark. One-on-one -on -one against Anderson straight away outside of the arc. Finds Ken Lewis, three from the left wing, too strong. Rebound tipped around to John Cora of Fort Lauderdale, and the Eagles get it back. They get a stop defensively. Now let's see if they can get a shot. They trail by 6, 17 to 11, 9 20 remaining in the first half. Andre Anderson dribbling the ball with his left hand at the left wing. Bounce pass at the left elbow to Kamari Brown. Around the horn goes UFTL. They reset. Mark Lancaster back into the game. Finds Kamari Brown. Fadeaway 15 foot jumper. No. Rebound by Jordan Burrow with the right hand. They took it away from John Cor. On the fast break play again, Atlanta's a whistle, and it's a foul on Fort Lauderdale, despite the fact that Trandon Smith was knocked over by Deshaun Archilas. And Archilas gets himself to the line for two free throws as Smith picks up his first personal foul, and that's the seventh team foul on UFTL. But because it was a shooting foul, it's two shots and not a one-and-one -one situation. That would have been if it was a non-shooting foul with seven fouls. His first free throw is good. Archilas with his first point. 18 to 11 in favor of Atlantis. They're on a nine nothing run after Fort Lauderdale led 11 to nine. And this crowd for Fort Lauderdale, they're still loud, trying to keep it a hostile environment for Atlantis, but Archilas hits both free throws. A 10 nothing run, 19 to 11, Atlantis leads after trailing 11 to nine earlier in the half. Andre Anderson at the right wing against the zone defense that is currently being displayed by Atlantis. Sean Cor at the left zone defense that is currently being displayed by Atlantis. Sean Cor at the left elbow, backs up, finds Mark Lancaster, three left side, so it's Mark Lancaster hits the three. That is the second three of the game. He's the leading scorer for Fort Lauderdale with seven points. 19-14 Atlantis leads, 8.27 to go, but a much needed bucket for Fort Lauderdale past the halfway point of the first half. The ball's stripped away, but Atlantis maintains control inside. Shot no good. Rebound by John Cor. Solid defense, and Andre Anderson maintains control of it. Fort Lauderdale back on the offensive. Kamari Brown sandwiched between two defenders. Lancaster, three. Thought about it. Goes inside instead. There's a little teardrop, and he gets it. Mark Lancaster is keeping Fort Lauderdale in the game. He's got five points in a row all by himself. Fort Lauderdale's within three. 19-16. 7.55 remaining in the first half. Another defensive chant going on for the Fort Lauderdale crowd. Stomping their feet, clapping their hands in unison. The ball belongs to Kevin Hopkins Jr. Goes inside, goes around John Carr, lays it up and in from the left side. Beautiful move from Hopkins. He's got five points. 21-16 in favor of Atlantis. Seven and a half to go in the first. In the paint, John Cora at the foul line fakes the shot. There's a whistle offensive foul despite the ball being taken away by Deshaun Archilas. And another offensive foul and another turnover as John Cora picks up his first foul. That is the eighth team foul on Fort Lauderdale. A one and one situation, but because it was an offensive foul, no one and one free throw shots for Atlantis, at least not yet. The inbound coming from Tyus Williams. On the far side of the floor, Jordan Burrow has it, Marquez Smith back into the game. Smith with solid coverage, full court press. He has to get it across the foul line, he does, to beat the 10 second violation. Hopkins, shot, rattles around, doesn't go, offensive foul on Kevin Hopkins Jr. Hopkins picks up his personal foul, and that is a 16 foul on Atlantis. Brandon Smith on the far side of the floor. And by far side of the floor, I made the opposite side of where Fort Lauderdale scores in this first half. He gets it into Marquez Smith. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Fort Lauderdale down by five, 21-16. Kamari Brown finds Marquez Smith, drives inside against two defenders, lost the ball. Another offensive foul. This one on Marquez Smith. That's Smith second. And that's the nine team foul on UFTL. And that's what's killing him right now more than anything, the offensive fouls. As Andre Anderson subs back into the game for Marquez Smith. 
And Anthony Anderson having a chat with Marquez Smith. Tyus Williams again on the inbound for Atlantis. It's not like Atlantis right now is getting defensive stops. It's just that Fort Lauderdale is shooting themselves in the foot. They've had back-to-back -back offensive fouls. Burrow inside to Ken Lewis. Reverse layup, no. Taken away by Kamari Brown. And Fort Lauderdale thwarts would-be disaster. They get the ball back. Andre Anderson thought about the three. That's a bad pass, but it deflects right to Kamari Brown. Tipped away and taken away by Atlantis as Janice Shepard has the ball for Atlantis. Driving inside is Hopkins Jr. Whistle, foul, pass inside. On the pass inside to Ken Lewis. A whistle, foul, and free throws for Lewis. So Ken Lewis with a couple more free throws. He's made one. He's got two shots to extend Atlantis' lead, possibly. Crowd gets active once again. The first shot on the way from Lewis. Rattles around the rim a couple of times and then drops in. Six points for Lewis. He's got two free throws. Two points by way of the free throw. 6-19 showing on the clock here in the first half. Mark Lancaster is out. What a job he's done in this first half. Two threes to keep Fort Lauderdale in the game. Second free throw by Lewis. Misses off the front of the rim short. Rebound by Trandon Smith of Fort Lauderdale. So Lewis hits one of two. Atlantis with a six-point lead, 22-16. They're on a 13-5 run after trailing 11-9 earlier in the half. Trayvon White, that's an air ball from the right side of the basket. Back to Kamari Brown, lays it up and in. Kamari Brown, his first real goal of the game, his first two points. 22-18 in favor of Atlantis. 5.52 to go in the first half. Jordan Burrow at the paint to the left side. That's a bad pass. Trayvon White almost takes it away. It is out of bounds. It stays with Atlantis despite the ball rolling into the Fort Lauderdale bench area. But a solid effort defensively by Trayvon White. Trandon Smith sets down. Aubrey Washington back into the game for the Eagles. Burrow has the ball, 1-1 against Kamari Brown. He's at the left elbow, pull up, fifth, pull up three from the left side, no. It bounces around to Ken Lewis who gets it back, a long rebound, lays it up and in from the left side of the basket. Eight points for Ken Lewis, 24-18 in favor of Atlantis, 5-25 remaining in the first half. Andre Anderson feeds it to John Core, who gets it to Kamari Brown at the right side. Fort Lauderdale looking for an answer. Down by six. Coming up on the five-minute mark of the first half. John Core traveling on John Core. He went around Hopkins, but he walked with it first. And a correction on the score. It is 23-18. As that three, apparently by Lewis, was actually a two, so it's 23-18 in favor of Atlantis, at least that's what the scoreboard indicates. Although it really should say 24, I think. Anyway, Mike Evans back into the game for Atlantis. Burrow has it. Lewis thought about the three from the far side, but gets it back to Burrow at the left wing. Shot clock not a factor. Blanket coverage from Andre Anderson. Stripped loose by John Core. Kept alive. Lewis against double coverage. John Core right in his face. Cross court pass to Hopkins. Goes inside, little teardrop runner, got it. Kevin Hopkins Jr. from straight away with an eight-foot teardrop. Kamari Brown finds Sean Core. Left side of the basket is Aubrey Washington. Andre Anderson with plenty of time on the shot clock. Kamari Brown, the leading scorer for Fort Lauderdale last year, and it's a strip and a foul against Kevin Hopkins Jr., his second and the seventh team foul on Atlantis. It will be two shots upcoming. But before we do that, there's a timeout on the floor. 4.30 exactly remaining in the first half. Atlanta's 25, Fort Lauderdale 18. This is Eagles basketball on the UFTL Sports Network.
David Griffith back again. Scott Galvin Community Center. 4.30 remaining in the first half. Atlantis 25, Fort Lauderdale 18. And what has been a sloppy offensive first half for Fort Lauderdale in this first game of the season. Coupled with the great defense by Atlantis in both the zone and the man-to-man. -man. Kamari Brown is at the free throw line for Fort Lauderdale after Kevin Hopkins picked up his second foul for Atlantis. Kamari Brown's first shot on the one and one misses out, rebound by Trayvon White, goes back up with a reverse layup and off the glass and in from the left side. Nice shot from Trayvon White. He has his first two points of the game, 25 to 20. Fort Lauderdale back down by five. That was a one and one situation and it was missed. The whistle, shot clock again is a There's a problem again with the shot clock, and that's why there's another stoppage in play. At least for Fort Lauderdale, they can say it gives them a chance to rest for a moment. Jarvis on to inbound. Atlantis on the offensive attack. Hunt drives inside against Washington. Double team, defensive switch, and Smith checks on him. Mike Evans, double covered. It is out of bounds. It belongs to Atlantis still with eight showing on the shot clock as the ball deflects off the wall at the end of the gym. And Atlantis will inbound with number 24, Jarvis Hunt. Marquez Smith back in the game for Christian Dijon. Hunt looks for somebody open. He finds Shanna Shepard three, right wing, no. And a rebound by Marquez Smith as he leaves his feet and elevates. Aubrey Washington finds Shannon Smith, teardrop short. It is out of bounds to Fort Lauderdale. Last touch out of bounds by Shepard of Atlantis. A little bit of a rush shot by Shannon Smith because he had a chance for that teardrop to go in, but he rushed it and he missed it short. He airballed it right in front of the basket. Kamari Brown, left wing. Bounce pass to Trandon Smith, left to the paint. Drives inside, turnaround jumper, no. Let's call it a pass to Trayvon White. Stays alive, Aubrey Washington three, right side. Oh, it rattles around the rim and comes down to Trandon Smith, puts it back up and in with a second chance bucket. Tray Trandon Smith with his first field goal of the game and a whistle and a foul, I think, on Aubrey Washington. No, I beg your pardon, Marquez Smith away from the ball. That is Smith's third personal in the half. 3.29 remaining in the first half. Fort Lauderdale has crawled to within three. They were down 25-18, but back-to-back -back buckets has them down 25-22 with 3.29 to play in the first half. But because that's the 10th team foul on Fort Lauderdale, it is free throws. And at the line is number 24, Jarvis Hunt. Javaris Hunt. And Jarvis Hunt's first free throw is good. Christian Dijon is back into the game for Fort Lauderdale as Hunt has his first point of the game. A lot of substitutions for Atlantis, including number 21, Terrence Williams, and number 12, Tyus Williams. Second free throw from Hunt upcoming. It is up, and he's got them both. 27-22 in favor of Atlantis. 3.25 remaining in the first half. Christian Dijon with the ball for Fort Lauderdale. The Eagles looking to respond, down by five. Aubrey Washington at the right wing. He's made a couple of threes from there. One on one against Shepard. Gets a screen from Trayvon White. Trandon Smith, right wing. Christian Dijon holds it up straight away outside the arc. Shot clock is at seven. Aubrey Washington pull up 20 footer off the front of the rim and battle for it. Taken away by Ken Lewis of Atlantis. Three minutes exactly remaining in the first half, but Atlantis with a big rebound there, taking the ball out of Fort Lauderdale's hands. Jarvis Hunt, 101 against Kamari Brown. 250 remaining in the first half. Again, the crowd active for Fort Lauderdale. Hunt, pull up, 18 foot jump shot, steps back and makes it. Javaris Hunt once again, 29 22 Atlantis, 234 to go as Hunt has four points in a row. Christian Dijon at the right wing, right in front of the Atlantis bench. Trayvon White lost the ball, dribbled it off his own knee, and Atlantis gets the ball back. One against two, down the lane. Williams, whistle, foul, free throws. As he got smacked in the face at the left side of the lane. Foul is on number 13, Christian Dijon. That is Dijon's first, and more free throws for Atlantis. 
This time it's Tyus Williams going to the charity stripe. It's a 29-22 lead for Atlantis, but Fort Lauderdale's been killing themselves with the offensive fouls and the turnovers. As Williams' first shot is way short, it points off the front of the rim. 2.20 remaining in the opening half. Fort Lauderdale probably can't wait to get into halftime. Mark Lancaster checks into the game, replacing Trandon Smith. Lancaster has a couple of threes. Sean Corr also back into the game for Kamari Brown as Sean Corr comes in for height. The six foot eight center from South Sudan and the leading rebounder on Fort Lauderdale last season. Second shot by Williams is no good. A strong rebound with the right hand by Christian Dijon. Fort Lauderdale back with the ball. They're looking for an answer, down by seven. Mark Lancaster, he has a couple of threes in this half. Aubrey Washington, Christian Dijon, lost it to Trayvon White, whistle and a foul, fortunate because the pass was high for Trayvon White. The foul is on number, looks like number four, Janice Shepard. It is Shepard's second. And it's free throws for Trayvon White. Trayvon White's first trip to the free throw line. His first free throw is on the way in the one on one situation. It is good. He's got three and he's got one more. 29 23, Fort Lauderdale's back within six. This second shot can bring him within five. John Corr switches places with number 21, Mark Lancaster, as John Corr goes back on the other side of the court for defense in case there's a fast break. White second free throw, hits the both. 29-24, Fort Lauderdale with the free throws. They're back within five. 2.03 remaining in the first half. Jordan Burrow back into the game. He's got it, 101 against Trayvon White. Less than two minutes remaining in the half. On the attack, Tyus Williams lays it up and in from the left side of the basket. He got around John Corr. Four points for Williams, 31-24 in favor of Atlantis. 143 remaining in the first half. Trayvon White outside the paint on the left side. Sean Corr bobbles it, gets it back. Bad shot off the glass and comes back down off the wrong side, the opposite side for where Fort Lauderdale shot it. Burrow has it. A lot of contact, a 15-foot jumper from the right side by Jordan Burrow. He's got it. That's Burrow's fourth point, 33-24. Four straight points for Atlantis. They built a nine-point lead. Mark Lancaster has Trayvon White bounce pass to Sean Corr against Ken Lewis. And Missed it short. John Corr has missed back-to-back -back shots that were makeable. Atlantis once again on the offensive tack. Jordan Burrow has the ball stripped, taken away by Mark Lancaster. Two against one. Lancaster against Lewis. No look pass to Trayvon White. Beautiful shot. Defense whistle foul. And it should be free throws for Fort Lauderdale as Trayvon White hits the deck along with Tyus Williams of Atlantis. It is on Tyus Williams. That is Williams's. First personal. And again, the one and one situation for Trayvon White. Actually, a bigger part, and it's two free throws because that's the 10th team foul. They've just flashed it on the scoreboard. So, two free throws for Trayvon White. He made his last two. Last strip down. His first free throw is nothing but net. 33 25 as White has five points all in this half and within the last couple of minutes. Fort Lauderdale's within eight with 58.1 showing on the clock in this first half. One more free throw upcoming for Trayvon White. His second free throw is good. Six points for White, 33-26. Fort Lauderdale back within seven. Anthony Anderson will stress the unforced errors at halftime, I'm sure. 33-26, Atlantis leads, 58 seconds remaining in the opening half. The inbound to Jordan Burrow. Atlantis can go two for one. Let's see if they opt to do so. As Jordan Burrow brings it across, bad pass, a lackadaisical pass taken away by Andre Anderson of Fort Lauderdale. Christian Dijon, three left side, misses it. Rebound by Trandon Smith, second chance bucket, sky hook, good. Right in front of the bucket. Four points for Trandon Smith, makes it 33-28. That certainly will help Fort Lauderdale going into the half. 31 seconds, another bad pass, it's loose. Trandon Smith gets it back. 
Finds Mark Lancaster, three, right side. Oh, in and out. It was close, but then taken away as another bad pass by Atlantis. Andre Anderson, runner, no. Rebound by John Corr, fight for it. He gets it, 15 seconds, another bad shot. It is loose, and Christian Dijon has it for Fort Lauderdale. It is out of bounds. It stays with Fort Lauderdale with 11.2 on the clock. John Corr claps his hands in frustration, frustrated with himself. And we have a timeout on the floor taken by Fort Lauderdale. I think Andre Anderson calls for a timeout. He's given the timeout signal, and he is with 11.2 remaining in the first half. It is 33-28 in favor of Atlantis, but the Fort Lauderdale Eagles, who have gotten a couple of big defensive stops because Atlantis has given them some help with some lackadaisical passes, they can get a shot and get some points, narrow this deficit going into the half. Let's see what Coach Anderson draws up here on the UFTL Sports Network. After the timeout taken by Anthony Anderson, Fort Lauderdale has the ball right underneath the Atlantis rim. 11.2 to play. Fort Lauderdale trails by five, but they can get one more shot going into the half. They'll be down at halftime still, but it will be a fairly reasonable deficit. Bounce pass, bad pass, so you can forget, it, forget about that. Jordan Burrow takes it away. Turnabout is fair play. Deshaun Angeles, no basket, offensive foul before the basket goes in for Deshaun Archulis. 3.3 to play, so Fort Lauderdale, despite the turnover, they get another break. 3.3 and they'll play for the last shot of the half. And it's Trandon Smith to inbound, Archulis picks up foul number two. Trandon Smith to inbound on the opposite side of the court. Fort Lauderdale has to go the full 94 feet. Smith lost it for Christian Dijon. Bad pass out of bounds. Last touch by Jordan Burrow. Two seconds left. But Fort Lauderdale does have it in the front 47. It will be from the near side. Although there is a little bit of a discussion. It is a foul. I saw the 1-5 sign go up for... I thought they called a foul, but... Well, the referee's going to go to the scorer's table and check it out. So let's see what we have here. The Fort Lauderdale cheerleaders, they have not lost any of their mojo. Staying active despite the five-point deficit for Fort Lauderdale. The game clock shows two seconds. The shot clock is off. The inbound from Andre Anderson. Maybe. It all depends on what the referee says because he's still over at the scorer's table with exactly two seconds showing and now they put another second on. So three seconds exactly. So they get a full 60 milliseconds. Three seconds for Fort Lauderdale to get a shot off. Down 33-25. Andre Anderson to inbound from the near side. Right in front of some spectators down at floor level and to add on to this remedy for Fort Lauderdale. Trandon Smith comes out. Coach Anderson subs in John Cor Unweech, the six foot eight center from South Sudan. And also, Kamari Brown, he's checking into the game for Christian Dijon. Dijon, one of the newcomers on this team, 10 in total, eight returners for Fort Lauderdale overall. Three seconds on the clock. Although they're still holding the game up. I'm not sure what the stoppage is for this time. Or are they resetting the clock again? They do. So 2.5 on the clock. First it was 2, then it was 3, and officially 2.5. Andre Anderson looks for somebody, finds Kamari Brown, clock goes. Brown, 3, straight away to end the half, way short air ball. And the half ends with the score 33-28 in favor of Atlantis. Atlantis 33, Fort Lauderdale 28 on this First game of the season for Fort Lauderdale and homecoming night. We have the homecoming festivities 
coming up at halftime to find out who will be named the homecoming king and queen, homecoming royalty. So enjoy the halftime festivities. I'm David Griffith, and we hope you stay tuned for the second half here on the UFTL Sports Network.
Welcome back to the Scotch Allen Community Center. I'm David Griffith, the voice of the Eagles here on the UFTL Sports Network. We're about to begin the second half between the visiting Atlantis University Atlanteans and the hometown University of Fort Lauderdale Eagles. Both teams have played solid defense, but really the difference in the first half was the unforced errors by Fort Lauderdale, the offensive fouls and the turnovers, which has them at a five-point deficit, 33-28. But I guess the good news for them is, despite the five-point deficit and despite the unforced errors, they're still very much in this game. And Fort Lauderdale will start off with the ball, this time going from left to right as Kamari Brown gets ready to inbound for the Eagles. The ball belongs to Andre Anderson of Fort Lauderdale. He takes it around the right wing, one-on-one against Kevin Hopkins, Jr., He's not a three-point shooter. Benez Wooder, the newly christened, the firstly christened homecoming king for Fort Lauderdale with the ball. Wooder thought about the three. Ducks inside. Anderson straight away. Back to Wooder. Three. Left wing. Knocks it down to begin the second half. Benez Wooder with his first kill goal of the game. And it comes at a good time. The three-point shot. There's a three the other way by Hopkins for the left side. That misses. And Wooder comes back with a rebound. Fort Lauderdale down by two. They can tie it with a shot. It is not good. It is whistle. And it is a goaltend against Atlantis. And the game is tied. 33 all. 41 seconds into the second half. And that did not take long. Basket gets credited, I think, to Joncor. Which would give him four points on the game. 45 seconds into the second half. It is 33-33. Jordan Burrow with the ball for Atlantis. Attacking right to left in their red uniforms. Burrow at the top of the key. Finds Lewis a wild shot. A high archer off the glass and he got it to go anyway. Lewis with 10 points and Atlantis back in front. 35-33, a minute 10 into the second half. Anderson to the right side. Trandon Smith goes inside and a layup for the right side of the basket. A no look pass from Andre Anderson. Smith ties it up, 35 all. A minute 20 into this second half. Almost lost the ball to Janice Shepard, but Jordan Burrow has the ball. 101 against Andre Anderson. Atlantis maintains control. Bounce pass to Tyus Williams out of bounds. Fort Lauderdale ball. He threw it right in the Fort Lauderdale in the Atlantis bench. So Fort Lauderdale. After the bad pass by Atlantis, they have the ball on the offensive. They can take the lead for the first time since 11-9, and a whistle and a foul as Andre Anderson went charging into the lane. And the foul goes against number 24, Jarvis Hunt. That is Hunt's first personal foul. It's not free throws, but the inbound for Andre Anderson. Bounce pass to Kamari Brown on the inbound. Trandon Smith inside, loose ball, kept alive by Sean Cor on Weech. Kamari Brown, fall away, 10-footer off the front of the rim. Sean Cor gets the rebound. Water from the near side, can't get the three to fall down, but Kamari Brown with another rebound. Third chance point, no. Kamari Brown taps it to Benez, Water can't get it. Air ball, whistle, foul, free throws coming up. And Sean Cor appealing to the crowd. He wants him to get loud. Sean Cor on Weech. And going to the line for two is Benez Woodard. He made the three that got Fort Lauderdale within two at the start of the second half. And with two minutes and five seconds gone by in the second half, he can give Fort Lauderdale the lead. A couple of free throws for Benez Woodard, his first free throw attempts of this game. Woodard's first free throw attempt knocks it down. Fort Lauderdale has their first lead since 11-9 in the first half. Substitutions from Antoine or from Antoine Anderson and the Atlanteans. Mike Evans back into the game for the Atlanteans along with number 21, Terrence Williams. Benez Woodard with a second free throw upcoming. It is in there. A two-point lead for Fort Lauderdale, 37-35, 17-52 in the second half. 17-52 to play. Burrow. Bounce pass to Archulis. 
double team, including John Corp. Bad pass taken away by Anderson, but before it is, a whistle for a foul on Trandon Smith, and he knows he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He knows he got nabbed. That is Smith's second foul, and booze coming from the partisan hometown crowd at Fort Lauderdale. So Jordan Burrow at the front court at the near side to inbound. Looks for Archulis, has Archulis, but it's back in the backcourt. So Fort Lauderdale with a two-point lead. Atlantis can tie with a two or take the lead back with a three in their own right. Shot clock down to nine. The ball belongs to Kevin Hopkins. Mike Evans, the shot clock at five. Archulis outside the arc, down to one. Burrow doesn't see it, and it's a shot clock violation against Atlantis. Jordan Burrow not paying any attention to the clock and that prompts a timeout, a quick timeout taken from Antoine Anderson as Fort Lauderdale has taken the lead back after trailing by as many as nine in, this, in the first half. They lead 37-35, 17-21 remaining in the second half here on the UFTL Sports Network. Thirty-seven, thirty-five. Fort Lauderdale has the lead. It was a 33-28 lead for Atlantis coming into the second half, but Fort Lauderdale has, whatever mistakes they have made in the first half so far, they have righted them. They have outscored Atlantis 9-2 and have taken a two-point lead after the timeout taken by Atlantis. As Atlantis trails for the first time since it was 11-9 in the first half. Mark Lancaster back in the game for Fort Lauderdale. He's hit a couple of threes that have kept Fort, that kept Fort Lauderdale in the game in the first 20 minutes. Brandon Smith at the left, Benes Woodard at the left side, finds Sean Corr at the left side of the lane. Sean Corr backpedals, right-handed shot, good from 10 feet away. 39-35, Fort Lauderdale leads by four. Their biggest lead of the game, 17 minutes exactly remaining in the second half. Cross-court pass to Jordan Burrow. Atlantis looks to limit the damage as Fort Lauderdale's on an 11-2 run out of the gate in the second half. Burrow goes inside, pull a 15-footer from the foul line off the back of the rim. It is out of bounds. Hit the top of the backboard, went over, came back down. That is officially out of bounds. And the ball belongs once again to Fort Lauderdale with a four-point lead, and they have a chance to do more as Atlantis looks for anything to stop the bleeding. But Fort Lauderdale on a tear on offense so far. Benez Woodard, who hit the three, coming out of the break in the second half, gives it to Andre Anderson. Fort Lauderdale on the attack. Mark Lancaster in front of the Fort Lauderdale bench left wing. John Corr left to the lane, holds the ball over his head. Sandwich inside, whistle for a foul against Atlantis. It is on number 12, Tyus Williams. That is Williams' second personal foul and the second team foul of this half for Atlantis University. More substitutions with number two, Javaris Johnson coming into the game and number 11, Kevin Hopkins Jr. replacing Javaris Hunt and Mike Evans. Benez Woodard to inbound for Fort Lauderdale. Right underneath the Atlantis bucket. Bad pass. John Core couldn't control it and taken away by Jordan Burrow. Down the lane. Double team. Bad shot off the front of the rim. Tipped around. Benez Woodard for Fort Lauderdale comes back with it. Fast break. Three on three. Pull up 15 footer. It has blocked. No, it was not blocked. It looked like it was blocked. The referee says it was Atlantis' ball and John Core so adamant it was deflected by 
Atlantis, and they corrected the call. They give the ball back to Fort Lauderdale. 16-13 in the second half. Fort Lauderdale with a four-point lead. And they have the ball once again in the Atlantis defensive zone. As Aubrey Washington, the graduate student, and Marquez Smith, also the football player, previously of ASA Miami, check in for Benez Woodard and Jean-Cor Unwich. Marquez Smith looks for somebody. Offensive foul as Trandon Smith knocks down a member of the Atlantis team, and he's taken a moment to get up. He's down flat on his back, supine. Hands on his forehead, needs to be helped up to his feet. That is number 15, Ken Lewis. So Fort Lauderdale with an empty possession on another offensive foul. That one on Trandon Smith, his third personal. He gets two more, he's done. The inbound for Atlantis, they trail by four. 39-35. Jordan Burrow has the ball. Atlantis trying to limit the damage that they've caused for themselves, basically. Tyus Williams, whistle, foul, shot. Doesn't go, and let's see if Williams gets himself to the line. The foul is on number 12. Trayvon White. That is White's second. And the free throw, it is free throws for Atlantis. The first one is in and out from Tyus Williams. So it stays 39-35 in favor of Fort Lauderdale. 16 minutes exactly remaining here in the second half. Another free throw coming up for Tyus Williams. He has four points all by way of the two-pointer. His second free throw bounces out and a one-handed rebound with the right hand by Trayvon White. Fort Lauderdale back on the offensive. Marquez Smith at the hash mark of the left side. Back outside the arc to Trayvon White. Holds it over his head with both hands. Straight away three. High archer. No. Rebound by Kamari Brown at the right lane. Gets it to Aubrey Washington. Dishes it back outside the reset with Kamari Brown. Lancaster inside. Tumble coverage. No. Bounces around to Jordan. Jordan Burrow of Atlantis. Ball is out. Last touch by Fort Lauderdale. It stays with Atlantis as it gets loose into the Fort Lauderdale bench. Tough luck for Fort Lauderdale. They did everything correct except make the bucket. Ken Lewis out, replaced by number 21, Terrence Williams. Big and strong, six foot five from Lauderdale Lakes. It's still 39-35. There's not been any scoring in at least a couple of minutes. Fort Lauderdale with a four point lead, 15-25 remaining in the second half. Jordan Burrow has the ball into Ter Terrence Will into Tyus Williams, I beg your pardon. Jordan Burrow, straight away outside the arc, gets it to Terrence Williams. There's a three. There's a three on the right side by Kevin Hopkins. Air ball. Snagged out of the air by Trayvon White. Fort Lauderdale on the offensive again. Mark Lancaster fakes the three. Goes to Kamari Brown. Left to the paint. Whistle. Offensive foul on Kamari Brown. Knocks down. Javaris Johnson of Atlantis. That is Brown's second personal foul. John Cor back into the game as Kamari Brown subs out. John Cor, of course, in for height, six foot eight. He's the, he was the top rebounder on Fort Lauderdale last season. So still 39-35, 15 minutes remaining in the second half. Atlanta's down by four, but you have to think the pressure is on them to get a bucket this trip down. Three straight away is in and swish from Tyus Williams. His first three of the game, he's got seven points. One point game, 39-38, Fort Lauderdale with a precarious one point lead. Aubrey Washington at the right wing. Marquez Smith at the left wing as they go around the horn a little bit. Mark Lancaster tells John Cor to come back and get it. He's got it, shot, good, and fell. John Cor gets himself to the line for an and one. The foul is on number 21, Terrence Williams. His first personal foul, John Cor with the bucket from the left side of the paint and we have a timeout on the floor before the free throw. 14-27 remaining in the second half. John Carr with a big shot and with an and one upcoming the Eagles lead 41-38 over Atlantis on the UFTL Sports Network.
41-38, Fort Lauderdale leads. Sean Cora with a shot from the left side of the lane. Gets a chance for an and one. The Eagles lead by three with 14-27 remaining in the second half. Sean Cora can make it a three-point play and put UFTL back up by four, which is what it was before the three from Tyus Williams of Atlantis. John Cora's and one opportunity. It is up and it is not good. T tipped around and Atlantis back in control. They can tie it with a three. Jordan Burrow passes it off to Javaris Johnson. Air ball kept alive for the moment by Atlantis, but Andre Anderson takes it away for Fort Lauderdale and a whistle for a foul as Terrence Williams tried to pick the pocket of Benez Woodard, but Williams gets caught with his hand in the cookie jar and a second personal foul. And it's the fourth team foul on Atlantis in the second half. 14-15 on the clock in the second half. Fort Lauderdale with a three-point lead, 41-38. Andre Anderson collects it in the backcourt on the inbound from Benez Water. Fort Lauderdale with a three-point lead, looking to extend it on this trip down. Anderson non uncontested, he missed the runner from five feet away straight away. Johnson down the lane, lays it up and in, despite getting knocked down by Benez Woodard. Johnson's got five points, 41 to 40. Fort Lauderdale leads by one. Three from the far side, no. A little bit too strong, tipped around as Aubrey Washington couldn't get the three to go. Hopkins Jr. down the lane, layup, no. It goes off the front of the rim and Fort Lauderdale back on the offensive. Benez Woodard holds it up at the right side on the near side, outside the arc. Andre Anderson sells it down, they reset. Defensive chant going on from the Atlantis bench. Aubrey Washington at the left wing, near the hash mark. Benez Woodard left to the paint, goes inside, 360, no. Gets his own rebound, puts it back up and out. Whistle, oh, bell, and an end of free throws for Benez Woodard. Benez Woodard doesn't get the shot, he gets the free throws. He would have liked an and one opportunity on the second chance attempt, but he gets two free throws as Benez Woodard is very aggressive over there. He's got five points all in this half. A three and a couple of free throws. He has a chance for seven in the first six and a half minutes. Six minutes and 38 seconds of the second half. Looking to extend Fort Lauderdale's lead to as much as three. The first shot by Woodard is nothing but net. Johnson out, Shepard in for Atlantis. Woodard, another big time free throw upcoming. It'll keep it a one possession game, but if Atlantis hits a three, the worst they can do is tie. Woodard second free throw, rattles out, and taken away by Terrence Williams of Atlantis. So Atlantis trails by two, they can tie with a two, he's out of bounds. Jordan Burrow is double covered by both Woodard and John Cora. His back foot stepped on the line. Fort Lauderdale gets it back on solid defensive coverage led by the South Sudanese expert John Cora Unwich. And John Cora inbounds it in the near side right in front of us. Fort Lauderdale leads by two. They can extend their lead this time down. Benez Woodard double covered. Blanket coverage from Kevin Hawkins Jr. Woodard right of the lane, layup, wild shot, no, out of bounds, no, it stays in bounds and kept alive by Aubrey Washington. Trayvon White, whistle, and we have a foul on Atlantis. Or is it a problem with the shot clock again? I think there's another problem with the shot clock. They blew the whistle, it might have, I thought it was a foul away from the ball, but as it stands, it is the shot clock it looks like. The shot clock shows 18, so that's not a factor, with Fort Lauderdale inbounding it from underneath Atlantis' rim. Andre Anderson finds Sean Cor. one one against Lewis, goes over Lewis with a right-handed sky hook. That's easy enough, and he scores. Eight points for Sean Cor. 45, 44 to 40, Fort Lauderdale, 12.41 to go. Lewis three, near side, two short, off the front rim and taken away by Hawkins Jr. Atlantis maintains control. Hawkins at the foul line, 15 foot jumper, too strong, gets his own rebound again. Little runner, floater, puts it in, it rattles in. Hawkins Jr. did a nice job, he never gave up on the play. Aubrey Washington, John Cor bobbles it, gets it back, and that's another easy layup, he never had to leave his feet. John Cor with back-to-back -back buckets, he's got 10 points. 
46-42, Fort Lauderdale, 12-10 remaining in the second half, and a very entertaining first game of the season. Burrow at the left side, three on the way, off to the right, Juncor gets the rebound, takes it away from Janice Shepard, the jump ball sign goes up, and Atlantis, with the possession arrow going their way, keeps the ball alive for the Atlanteans. Tough luck for John Core. He did everything well, got the ball, but Janice Shepard, very scrappy on that play, gets the, keeps the ball alive for the visitors in red, the Atlantis Atlanteans. Aubrey Washington is out. Mark Lancaster is in, and for the first time tonight, Carrington Campbell is into the game as Andre Anderson subs out. Carrington Campbell, the six foot seven sophomore forward from Miramar. Hunt looks for somebody. Bounce pass inside to Williams. It's blocked by John Corr, but not before he gets whistled for the foul. And it's free throws upcoming for Terrence Williams. And that's John Corr's second foul. So Fort Lauderdale playing excellent defense here in the second half, but Atlanta staying alive because they're being able to find those open holes and get open shots. The first free throw is out, rattles out for Terrence Williams. He's not on the scorer sheet yet. He's looking to get his first point of the contest. He hits this free throw. He makes it a one possession game to make it 46-43. He misses them both. That one strong rebound by Mark Lancaster of Fort Lauderdale. The Eagles back the other way. Benez Woodard drives inside against Burrow. Feeds it to Carrington Campbell outside the arc. Campbell over to Trayvon White. Left to Trayvon White. Left to left wing. John Cora right wing. Into Trayvon White. White right of the lane. Over to Mark Lancaster. Shot clock at seven. Lancaster finds Campbell. Shot clock down to five. Lancaster can't control it. He can't get to it in time on the bad pass from Carrington Campbell and another turnover for Fort Lauderdale. And it stays 46-42 UFTL with 11 and a half to go in the second half. Atlanta staying alive because Fort Lauderdale is still making the unforced errors. The shot clock was winding down on them, but really for 30 seconds that was solid defense by Atlanta. And the Atlanteans back on the offensive. Carrington Campbell can't keep pace with Jordan Burrow. Loose ball. John Cord knocks it away. Loose on the floor. Right underneath the rim. Kept alive by Chavaris Hunt of Atlantis. Lobs it into Archulus. Three. Hopkins fakes the three. Goes inside. Wild shot off the back of the glass. And it goes in as it bounces off the rim and goes in. Archulus has four points. 46-44. Fort Lauderdale. They lead by two. 10.58 remaining in the second half. Trayvon White, sky hook, short. Chuck Moore gets the rebound as it deflects right to him. Taken away, whistle, foul on Hopkins. And Atlantis commits their sixth team foul of this half. Hopkins picks up number three, his third personal. Hopkins is out. Replaced by number 12, another Williams, Tyus Williams. And a lot of substitutions on Fort Lauderdale side. Carrington Campbell is out, John Cor is out, and Mark Lancaster out. Christian Dijon back in for Fort Lauderdale. Kamari Brown also win. He inbounds it to Andre Anderson right at the three-point country, straight away outside of the arc. Anderson caught over by the hash mark. Bad pass. Jordan Burrow takes it away. Say goodnight. He's down the lane. Slam dunk ties the game. Burrow with a six point. It's 46 46. Ten and a half to go in this game. Back and forth we go here at the Scott Galvin Community Center. Andre Anderson finds Aubrey Washington, the grad student. Washington outside the arc. At the foul line, finds Andre Anderson. He's not a three-point shooter. Cross-court pass to Dijon. Shot clock is at nine. Anderson straight away outside the arc. Goes inside against an Atlanta player offensive foul on Anderson. As he runs over Javaris Hunt. And that's Anderson's first personal foul, and he picked a bad time to pick it up. Anderson out. Marquez Smith back in for the Eagles.
and Alanis this trip down. They can take the lead. It's 46-46. But any type of field goal, a two or a three, puts them ahead. And inbounding it on the opposite side of the floor is Tyus Williams. 10.07 remaining in the second half, almost halfway through it. Tavares Hunt as we're at the halfway mark of the second half. Atlantis looking for the lead, 46-46. Atlantis with the ball, Hunt uncontested, down the lane, whistle, foul, and he goes to the line for a chance to give Atlantis the lead. Foul is on. Number 10, Trandon Smith. That is Smith's fourth, if my calculations are correct. Timeout on the floor, 9.55 remaining in the second half, and we have a very entertaining game. It's free throws coming up for Chavaris Hunt after the stoppage here on the UFTL Sports Network. Forty-nine, Atlantis by one. He says to Aubrey Washington, "Try this on for size." Right back at you. Eight forty-eight to go. Atlantis leads by one, fifty to forty-nine. Marquez Smith, three left wing. Oh, he couldn't get it on the bounce off the glass. S. Williams down the lane. Jordan Burrow off the glass and in. As Marquez Smith couldn't get there in time. Atlantis leads by three, fifty-two forty-nine. Aubrey Washington at the half mark in front of the UFTL bench. Sean Cork. Gets it to Trayvon White, has trouble corralling it, gets it, bad shot, it's an air ball. This is everything, it misses it short. And it comes right down to Jordan Burrow of Atlantis. They lead by three, 8-12 to go. Atlantis can increase their lead. Hunt, right of the lane, shot doesn't go, gets himself to the line. Foul is on, UFTL, it's on Aubrey Washington. That is his first personal. But Javaris Hunt, quick as a bat, gets himself to the line for the second time in less than two minutes. The first time he had a free throw, he gave Atlantis the lead when it was 46-46. So Javaris Hunt, two free throws. His first shot is strong. And Hunt, unable to hide his frustration, ducks away. Trayvon White and Marquez Smith out. Benez Water and Andre Anderson back in. Andre Anderson going with the big guns, shooting-wise. Including Benez Water, who's been a marksman in the second half with six points. Hunt's second free throw. It's on its way, and he rattles it in. Hunt with six points, all by way of the free throw. 53-49 in favor of Atlantis. Eight minutes to play. A defensive chant going on for Atlantis from the Atlantis bench. John Core outside the arc. He's not a three-point shooter. Atlantis doesn't have to worry about him. Trayvon White goes around. Jordan Burrow left of the lane. Off the glass. No. Kamari Brown rebound. Puts it up. No. A little bit short on the putback, but he gets himself to the line anyway. The foul is on number one, Jordan Burrow. That is his first personal. And Kamari Brown, who was the leading scorer for Fort Lauderdale last year, despite not joining the team until halfway through the season, he can reduce this deficit to a deuce if he hits them both. Kamari Brown's first shot on the way, and it's way short. It's off the front of the rim. Bad shot by Kamari Brown. He has two points in this game. He's looking for his first by way of the free throw. And it rattles in. 
went around the globe a few times and then went down. 53 to 50 is the score. 7.45 remaining in this game. Atlantis leads by a three-pointer. Javaris Hunt has the ball for Atlantis as they look to add on to their three-point lead. Kamari Brown playing defense. Hunt goes behind the back. Cross. Dribble. There's a little 15-foot pull. Jumper. What a shot by Javaris Hunt. And that's his first field goal of the night. 55 to 50 at Lennis, 722 to go. John Moore right of the lane puts it in as Terrence Williams couldn't contain him. 12 points for John Core, 55 52. 7 12 remaining in the second half. And a very entertaining game. Back and forth we go, but Atlantis maintains a three-point lead. Tavares Hunt down the lane, left of the lane, double covered, bad pass. It is a foul against Fort Lauderdale. It's on number 22, John Corr. Or big apart, number two, Kamari Brown. Brown's third. As the crowd on hand for Atlantis gets loud. They haven't really... They've been vocal tonight, but they haven't been as, I guess you could say, feverish like Fort Lauderdale's has tonight. But it's free throws again for Atlantis. And once again, it's Javaris Hunt, who's taken over in the second half for Atlantis. As the Atlanteans lead by three, 55-52, 7.03 to go. Time is becoming a factor for the Eagles. Hunt's first free throw is in. Nine points for Hunt, five in this half, and he has really taken control the last minute or so for Atlantis. He has another free throw upcoming to make it a five-point lead potentially for Atlantis. Hunt's second free throw is nothing but the bottom of the bucket. 57-52 in favor of Atlantis as Aubrey Washington checks in for Kamari Brown. Trayvon White to inbound for the Eagles. They trail by five, 57-52, seven minutes to play. Andre Anderson lost the ball, out of bounds. Atlantis has it. It got loose in the scorer's table as Kevin Hopkins Jr. just picked Anderson's pocket. And that prompts Anthony Anderson to get Christian Dijon back into the game with Andre Anderson sitting. Not liking that sequence at all. You're trying to get back into the game. The last thing you want to do is turn it over. And Fort Lauderdale did right there. And Atlantis, last year 18-2 overall, 11-0 on the road. And it was games like this that proved to you why they were road warriors. Jordan Burrow has it for Atlantis, looking to add on to this five-point lead. Burrow sandwiched inside, whistle. It is a jump ball signal, but the possession arrow indicates it stays with Atlantis. Or does it? No, it's Fort Lauderdale's ball. The possession arrow points Atlantis' way, but they award the ball to Fort Lauderdale with 6.48 to play. Christian Dijon gives it to Trayvon White. Fort Lauderdale down by five. They need a bucket, and they need a rally. Benez Woodard, he's been the marksman for Fort Lauderdale in the second half. Finds Aubrey Washington, John Corr, left wing. He's not a three-point shooter. Cross-court pass to Trayvon White. Trips, loses the ball, and taken away by Janice Shepard of Atlantis. Down the lane, whistle, foul on Woodard, and two shots coming up for Shepard. And another turnover for Fort Lauderdale. That's what's killed him all night long as Woodard picks up foul number three. And Janice Shepard with a couple of free throws. He can push it up to seven. Atlantis' biggest lead has been nine. That was in the first half. Trayvon White, one of the new additions to Fort Lauderdale. Ten new players overall. But that time he just tripped over his own two feet and he gave the ball up. And Jana Shepard, nothing to do with it except just try to go up with a shot, and he got fouled by Benez Woodard despite knocking Woodard over. So, two free throws for Jana Shepard to try to increase this 
Atlantis lead to seven. Shepard's first free throw is too strong. Substitution for Atlantis. Ken Lewis is into the game for Terrence Williams. One more free throw upcoming for Shepard. He has not scored yet tonight. He's looking to get on the scorer sheet. Looking to make it a six point lead for Atlantis as the crowd is loud here at Scott Galvin Community Center. The second one goes. One point for Shepard. 58-52 in favor of Atlantis. 6.22 to play in a defensive struggle here tonight. Christian Dijon across the midcourt line, taken away by Janice Shepard, whistle and a foul on Dijon. Janice Shepard does it again, his second time in as many possessions. And that's free throws for Atlantis as Fort Lauderdale is over the limit and Atlantis is in the bonus. Dijon fouls Shepard, Dijon picks up his second. And Fort Lauderdale getting very careless with the ball. They're getting way too nonchalant with it, and that's what's cost them points all night long. Janice Shepard for a couple of free throws to push it up to eight. He was one of two the last time out. The first free throw misses. Andre Anderson back in as Christian Dijon sits down. One more free throw for Janice Shepard. Shepard's second free throw, he's got it. 59-52, Atlantis leads by seven, 6.15 to go. Fort Lauderdale needs a bucket. They need something to get back into this game. Down by seven with six minutes to go, a little more than six minutes to go. Feeds it to Aubrey Washington, right wing. 15 footer from the foul line, High Archer got it. Aubrey Washington with seven points. 59-54, Fort Lauderdale gets the bucket. Now let's see if they can get a stop defensively. Jordan Burrow has the ball. Gets it across the midcourt line. 101 against Andre Anderson. Defensive chant going on for the Fort Lauderdale crowd. Hawkins Jr. has it. Takes it left of the lane. 101 against Sean Corp. Pull up. 18 footer. Gets it from the left side. Big shot by Hawkins and a backbreaker for Fort Lauderdale. 61 54. Atlanta's five and a half to go. Andre Anderson at the left wing. Hands it off to Benez Woodard at the hash mark. 101 against Janice Shepard. Woodard gets by him. Woodard from the left of the lane. No. Rebound by John Cor. It is loose ball. It is a foul. And that should be free throws for John Cor. The foul is on Atlantis. It is on number four. Janice Shepard, his third. Two shots upcoming for John Cor. With 5.17 to play. And Fort Lauderdale down by 7. 61-54. The first game of the season. And also Fort Lauderdale's home opener on homecoming night here in North Miami. A warm night inside, but it feels like you can hang meat on the inside. John Corr with free throws. John Corr's first shot is in there. John Corr has 13 points, and that's his first by way of the free throw. As Javaris Hunt subs in for Janice Shepard. John Corr with one more free throw upcoming. He can cut the deficit to five at the 5-17 mark of the game. John Corr's second shot is no good. Tipped around, still alive. Taken away by Javaris Hunt of Atlanta. Says he holds it up with both hands. Williams right of the lane. That's a bad, almost a bad pass, but saved by Hopkins. Lewis gives it to Jordan Burrow. They reset. Five minutes to go. Williams at the foul line, goes inside against John Corr. Bad shot off the glass, tipped back up and in by Lewis. Ken Lewis for the second chance bucket. He's got 12, 63-55. Atlanta's up by eight, 4.48 to go. John Corr hands it off to Andre Anderson, who gives it on the end around to Benez Water. Three straight away, that's a difficult shot, it's wide. Andre Anderson with a long rebound, right wing. Fort Lauderdale keeps possession. Anderson with eight on the shot clock. Water from the right side. That's too strong. Rebound out of bounds. Lancaster couldn't come down with it. It is a foul on Atlantis. It is on number 12, Tyus Williams. That's Williams' third. And it's free throws for Mark Lancaster. He lost the ball out of bounds, but that's because he got fouled in the process. 
63-55, Atlanta up by eight, 4.27 to go. Kamari Brown subs in for Aubrey Washington. And also in for Atlantis is number three, Deshaun Archulis, and number 21, Terrence Williams. Mark Lancaster on the night with nine points. He has one free throw on the night. Look to make it number two. One and one situation, knocks the first shot down. 63-56, one more free throw coming his way. Lancaster. With 10 points on the night, he gets into double figures. He's one of only two players in double figures for Fort Lauderdale tonight, along with John Cor on which who has 13. And we have a timeout before the free throw is attempted. 427 remaining in the game. 63-56 Atlantis maintains a seven-point lead. Fort Lauderdale trying to come back on the UFTL Sports Network. So out of the timeout, Mark Lancaster knocked down one free throw, looking for a second. Lancaster's second free throw to make it a six-point game, he does. Lancaster with 11 points out of the timeout, 63-57, Atlanta's up by six, 425 to go. But a couple of free throws by Fort Lauderdale keeps them in this game. Jabaris Hunt to Jordan Burrow, who's been the ball carrier for Atlanta's and double dribble on Burrow. And Fort Lauderdale gets the quick takeaway. Albeit by an unforced error by Jordan Burrow. Mark Lancaster to inbound right in front of us on the near side. 4.17 to go. Fort Lauderdale down by six. They need to find good looks for buckets. Down by six points. Trying to cut into this deficit even more. Benez Woodard goes inside. Left of the lane. Pull up jumper. Blocked by Hopkins. Kamari Brown gets it. Bad pass. Almost taken away. Kamar Andre Anderson keeps it alive. Lob into John Corr, right in the lane. Off. It's a foul. No offensive foul. It's a defensive foul. John Corr gets himself to the line again. Foul is on number 24, Javaris Hunt. That is his second personal. And it's free throws for John Corr. He has two shots with 3.54 remaining. So Choncor with a couple of free throws. Fort Lauderdale down by six. First free throw by Choncor is in. Choncor the leading scorer for Fort Lauderdale tonight. He has 14. 63-58 Atlantis' lead cut to five with Choncor having one more free throw. He can cut it to four. JK second shot. Oh, it's in and out. Rebound by 
Deshaun Archulis of Atlantis. They're stuck in their own backcourt. They have to get it across before the 10 second violation. They do. Javaris Hunt, that was almost a travel, taken away by Mark Lancaster. Fort Lauderdale has a chance. Kamari Brown, whistle foul. Brown gets to the line. The foul on Jordan Burrow. That is his second. And Kamari Brown has two free throws as Fort Lauderdale are rising from the dead, it seems. With 3.38 still to play in the second half. Two free throws for Kamari Brown. He can cut it to three. Brown on the night with three points. One by way of a free throw. His first shot is in. It rattles in. 63-59. 3.38 to go. He makes this shot. It's a single possession game. And then let's see if Antoine Anderson wants to call a timeout. His second free throw. No. It is taken away by Hopkins Jr. of Atlantis. They lead by four. Down the lane quickly. Off the glass. No. Second chance bucket. No. Rebound by Kamari Brown. Fort Lauderdale averts would-be disaster. And Mark Lancaster is down, holding onto his right knee. He's down on his behind, holding onto his right knee. He's hurt. And a stoppage in play because Lancaster, obviously in a lot of pain, he gets up staggering, favoring that right leg of his. And that prompts Aubrey Washington to get into the game as... Mark Lancaster hobbles out of the arena. But for Fort Lauderdale, the important, the just as equally as important thing for them is they have the ball back with 325 remaining and down by four. 63-59. Kamari Brown to inbound from the near side. Lobs it to Andre Anderson. So we play on. Shot clock not a factor. Fort Lauderdale, they can take their time, but they need good shots. Anderson directing traffic, bounce pass outside the yard to Aubrey Washington. Kamari Brown at the right wing, goes inside, pull up jumper from the foul line, off to the right. Rebound by Williams, Tyus Williams of Atlantis. Three minutes to play, 63-59 in favor of Atlantis. Terrence Williams, 24 from the near side, big bucket for Atlantis. That's his first points of the game and he picked a good time to hit it. 65-59, Andre Anderson finds Kamari Brown. Right side to Benez Woodard, right wing. Kamari Brown off the glass and in with a layup as Benez Woodard had a beautiful pass. 65 61, 238 to go. Loose ball out of bounds. Fort Lauderdale ball. Benez Woodard leaving it all on the floor and he stripped it away from Jordan Burrow. Timeout taken by Atlantis with 2.37 to go. Atlantis with a four point lead, but Fort Lauderdale gameway staying in this contest. How can they respond when we come back for the timeout on the UFTL Sports Network? Two thirty-seven to play in this game. Atlanta 65, Fort Lauderdale 61. And if you like drama, well, you couldn't ask for much more of it for the first game of the season. In the last time out with 427 to play, Atlanta led 63-56. And now with 237 remaining, it's 65-61 in favor of Atlanta. But after the ball just went off of Atlanta, Fort Lauderdale has the ball on the Atlanta side of the floor with Andre Anderson to inbound. A two-pointer makes it a two-point game. Andre Anderson finds Jancor. Right side of the paint, Kamari Brown penetrates inside. Fall away, 10-footer, Swiss makes it a two-point game. Eight points for Kamari Brown, 65-63, 2.25 to go. Atlantis leads by a deuce. 
Defensive chant coming from the Fort Lauderdale crowd. Jordan Burrow, that looked like a hop step, but no travel called. Hopkins Jr. gets it over to Terrence Williams, off the glass, out, rebound by Kamari Brown, whistle, and a foul. And more boos ringing out for the Fort Lauderdale crowd. And it's free throws coming up for Kevin Hopkins Jr. Or is it Terrence Williams? It's one of the two. It's Terrence Williams, number 21, not Kevin Hopkins, number 11. 2.13 to go. It's Terrence Williams, who on the night has just two points. None by way of a three throw, but if he makes them both, he can make it a two possession game again. But Atlantis holding on to a precarious two point lead. The crowd gets loud. First free throw is strong and no good. Off the back rim. Even if he makes this one, it's still a one possession game with still over two minutes to play. Listen to this crowd. Second free throw by Williams. This is a goal. Rebound by Kamari Brown. Fort Lauderdale can tie with a two or go ahead with a three. 2.06 to play. Andre Anderson has the ball. Defense check going on from the Atlantis bench. Andre Anderson feeds it a shot. Core lays it up and out. Andre Anderson, second chance bucket. No. Anderson gets it. Goes it. Wild shot tipped around to Kamari Brown. Goes down the lane. Wild shot off the glass and out. Atlantis gets another stop and taken away by Terrence Williams. Jump ball oh. sign goes up. Who, who does it belong to? It's Atlantis' ball with 1.47 to go. It's Fort Lauderdale. Had about three or four chances on that one, but none of them went down. It's both solid defense and bad luck for Fort Lauderdale, but it's been that kind of a night for them. They can't get over the hump. And they need a stop on defense with 1.47 to go. Ken Lewis back into the game for number 13, Mike Evans. Listen to this Fort Lauderdale crowd. They have their own defensive check going on. Jordan Burrow has the ball. 65-63 in favor of Atlantis. 100 seconds to go. Tyus Williams traveling on Williams. He traveled with the ball, getting right by Benez Woodard. And Fort Lauderdale gets the ball back with another chance to tie or take the lead. 138 on the clock. John Cor on the inbound from Kamari Brown. Finds Benez Water three near side for the lead. In and out. Rebound by Kamari Brown. Puts it up and out. Rebound by Atlantis and Javaris Hunt. Another bad break for Fort Lauderdale. 125 to go. Hunt stuck in no man's land. He traveled. Another travel. And Fort Lauderdale gets another stop and another chance to tie or take the lead. The question is, can they? They haven't been able to do that yet. 124 to go. Fort Lauderdale, they've gotten good shots off, but whenever there's a second chance bucket opportunity, they just seem to be rushing them now. And that's why they haven't been able to tie up this game. 124 to go. Andre Anderson off the inbound from Kamari Brown. A full 30 seconds on the shot clock. Anderson 101 against Kevin Hopkins Jr. Takes it to the right wing. Hopkins with man-to-man -man defense. Kamari Brown inside. Aubrey Washington, three from the far side for the lead. No. Rebound by Kevin Hopkins of Atlantis as the clock ticks down to 102 to go. A basket for Atlantis would be bad luck for Fort Lauderdale, and they'd be in big trouble. Javaris Hunt in the front court. Goes around Aubrey Washington. High arching shot. No. Rebound by Benez Woodard. 46 seconds to go. Fort Lauderdale on the attack. Aubrey Washington, three from the far side. Again, too short. Rebound by Benez Water takes it away. Another jump ball signal. Fort Lauderdale's ball with 39 seconds exactly on the clock. What a game. I'll tell you what. And it's well acknowledged all the way over here. Here in the broadcasting position. Now a chant of let's go Eagles for the first time and a timeout on the floor. 39 seconds exactly remaining in the second half. 65-63, Atlantis gamely holding on to a two point lead. Fort Lauderdale trying to tie, but that is long eluded them. Find out if they can on the UFTL Sports Network.
so out of the timeout. 39 seconds remaining. Fort Lauderdale down by two, looking for the bucket to tie. 65-63, Atlantis leads. 39 seconds, Fort Lauderdale on the inbound. Kamari Brown out of bounds. Jordan Burrow knocks it out for Atlantis. Fort Lauderdale maintains control. Or are they going to review it? Or they're actually going to switch the clock, I would think. The clock shows 39 seconds. 39 seconds exactly. They take a second off. 38 seconds to go. Shot clock at 17. Fort Lauderdale's in the front court. Atlantis needs a good stop defensively. Andre Anderson lobs it to Kamari Brown. Right at the lane. 101 against Burrow. Fall away jumper. In and out. Rebound by Tavares Hunt of Atlantis again. 28 seconds to go. Fort Lauderdale. Man, oh man, how unfortunate can you get tonight? And a timeout taken by Atlantis because Jarvis Hunt was Javaris Hunt was stuck in the backcourt area. 23 seconds ago, Atlantis leads by two. And they had a big time stop right there. Again, as Fort Lauderdale once again missed in and out because Kamari Brown had a good look, just could not finish the play. We'll take another timeout and come back in a moment. Twenty-three seconds remaining. It's remaining, and this crowd is standing. Atlantis leads 65-63. Fort Lauderdale's had about three or four chances to tie or take the lead because Atlantis has given them opportunities with the giveaways. But Atlantis holding on by the skin of their teeth. Gets to the Jordan Burrow whistle and a foul on Andre Anderson holding on to the jersey of Jordan Burrow. He gets to the line with two free throws. That is Anderson's second personal. And before Burrow shoots the free throws, we have another stoppage of play. I think it might be a matter of trying to reset the shot clock, or the game clock rather, because it was 23 seconds when we resumed play. They got it into Jordan Burrow. That had to have taken at least a second off the clock. Or actually, no time taken off the clock as Burrow to shoot the free throws. This first shot is out. And it stays a two-point game. 65-63, Atlantis. 23 seconds remaining. One more free throw for Burrow. The crowd once again for Fort Lauderdale and a raucous chorus. He gets the second free throw. That's his first free throw of the night, Jordan Burrow. 66-63. Fort Lauderdale needs a three to tie, but they have to go quickly. Clock is down to 20 seconds. Mark Lancaster brings it into the front court. Whistle and a foul on number 12 for Atlantis. Tyus Williams. And it's two shots for Mark Lancaster. He has 11 points on the night. Three by way of the free throw. And he has a couple of threes also. Both threes were in the first half. 17.6 on the clock, 66-63. Lancaster with big time free throws here. Lancaster's first free throw is good. 
It bounced around and it went in. And it seemed like it bounced around the rim for quite some time. Mike Evans back into the game for Atlantis as Tyus Williams checks out. One more free throw for Lancaster to make it a one-point game with 17.6 to go. The Atlantis crowd making some noise now. Lancaster's second free throw. It is up. It is short and a rebound by Ken Lewis. He's stuck over in the backcourt. Gets it to Jarvis Hunt. Clock is down to 10 seconds. Jordan Burrow holds it up. Mike Evans, shot clock down. Game clock down to 7.4. Evans gets fouled and free throws up coming for Atlantis. And with a couple of free throws, that could put the game away. If he makes them both. Mike Evans to the line. He has two points, both by way of the free throw. 7.4 on the clock as Mark Lancaster made the first free throw but missed the second. That would have made it a one-point game. As it stands, it's a two-point game. And these are big free throws the other way for Mike Evans. First free throw is good. 67-64, 6.4 to go. Fort Lauderdale, when they look back on what went wrong for them tonight, the look at the unforced errors and the look at the lack of opportunities and second chance points. Second free throw is in for Evans with 7.4 to go. Four points for Evans and those two free throws big ones. Andre Anderson into the front court. Walks the ball out of bounds. They try to get it to Mark Lancaster and that will do it. Andre Anderson trying to no look past the Lancaster right of the lane but that will end it officially as Atlantis will sneak away with a win by the skin of their teeth. Aubrey Washington checks in one last time as Sean Cor sits. Atlantis will win 68-64. All Atlantis has to do is get the ball in bounds with 1.3 on the clock on what has been just a, a night of bad luck, incredibly bad luck for Fort Lauderdale. Ball taken away by Kamari Brown, fires up a frozen rope, the whistle goes off and the game is over. 66-64, 68-64 as Atlantis wins the first game of the season and spoil Fort Lauderdale's home opener on homecoming night. They were 11-0 on the road last season because they were road warriors. They get win number one on the road tonight and they start off 1-0. Fort Lauderdale goes to 0-1 and they hit the road in Louisiana later in the week. We will have our post-game remarks here at the Scott Galvin Community Center. Once again, the final score, Atlanta 68, Fort Lauderdale 64 on the UFTL Sports Network. Final recap at the Scott Galvin Community Center. Atlanta sneaks away with a win 68-64 over Fort Lauderdale. But it was all too interesting in the end. Fort Lauderdale was down by two for quite some time and they had multiple chances to tie or take the lead, but ultimately the shots would not fall. Just incredibly bad luck by Fort Lauderdale and ultimately what else did the men aside from not being able to make shots was the giveaways, the unforced errors they put upon themselves in the first half, which allowed Atlantis to grab a five-point lead going into the break. And Atlantis, they went 11-0 on the road last year, and you can see why. They played well enough to win on the road and spoil Fort Lauderdale's homecoming and their home opener. Fort Lauderdale hits the road in Louisiana later this week. Atlantis will look to go 2-0 as they match up with their next opponent. 
This is the final from the Scott Galvin Community Center in North Miami. Once again, Atlanta 68, Fort Lauderdale 64. I'm David Griffith, the voice of the Eagles, and this has been men's basketball on the UFTL Sports Network. And from all of us involved, good night, everybody.